Chapter Four of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Four A Haunted House. The model tenement which Miss Lovejoy had pointed out to them was soon reached. A door on the ground floor was labelled Office, and so Gloria pushed the electric button. A trim young woman whose long-lashed dark eyes suggested her nationality received them, but regretted to have to tell them that every flat in the model tenement was occupied. She looked but with slightly concealed curiosity at these three applicants who, as was quite evident, were from other environments. Gloria glanced about the neat courtyard and up at the windows where flowers were blossoming in bright window boxes. Then, glowingly, she turned back to the girl. It was a splendid thing for those wealthy society women to do, wasn't it, she said, erecting this really handsome yellow brick building in the midst of so much poverty and squalor. It must have a most uplifting effect on the lives of the poor people to be able to live here where everything is so sweet and clean rather than there. Nodding as she spoke at the building across the street which looked gloomy, crumbling, unsafe and unsanitary. The office attendant spoke with enthusiasm. No one knows better than I, for I used to live in the other kind of tenement when I was a child. Miss Lovejoy's club for factory girls gave me my chance to learn bookkeeping, and now I am agent here. My name is Miss Selensky. Would you like to see the model apartment? Thank you, indeed you would, Gloria replied with enthusiasm. Then she added, Miss Selensky, I am Miss Vandergrift, and these are my sisters, Roberta and Lena May. We hope to be your neighbours soon. If there was a natural curiosity in the heart of the dark-eyed girl, she said nothing of it, and at once led the way through the neatly tiled halls, and soon opened a door admitting them to the small flat of three rooms, which was clean and attractively furnished. The windows, flooded with sunlight, overlooked the East River. "'This is the apartment that we show,' Miss Selensky explained. "'The others are just like it, or were before tenants moved in,' she corrected. "'Say, this sure is cosy. Who lives in this one?' Bobs inquired. "'I do,' Miss Selensky replied, hurrying to add. "'But I did not fit it up. The ladies did that. "'It has all the modern appliances that help to make housekeeping easy, "'and once every week a teacher comes here to instruct the neighbourhood women "'how to cook, clean, and sew, in fact, how to live. "'And the lessons and demonstrations are given in this apartment.' "'When the girls were again in the office, Gloria turned to their new acquaintance, saying, "'Do you happen to know of any place around here that is vacant when we might like to live?' At first Miss Selensky shook her head, then she added with a queer little smile, "'Not unless you're willing to live in the old Pensinger mansion.' Then she went on to explain, "'Long, long ago, when New York was a little more than a village and 78th Street was country, all along the East River there were, here and there, handsome mansion-like homes and vast grounds. Oh, so different from what it is now. Every once in a while you find one of these old dwellings still standing.' Some of them house many poor families, but the Pensinger mansion is seldom occupied. If a family is brave enough to move in, before many weeks the for rent sign is again at the door. The rent is almost nothing, but, the girl hesitated and then went on to say, maybe I ought not to tell you the story about the old place if you have any thought of living there. Oh, please tell it. Is it a ghost story? Bobs begged, and Gloria added, yes, do tell it, Miss Selensky. None of us are afraid of ghosts. "'Of course you aren't,' Miss Selensky agreed, "'and for that matter neither am I, "'but nearly all of our neighbours are superstitious. "'Mr. Tenowitz, the grocer at the corner of First and Seventy-Ninth, "'has the renting of the place, "'and he declares that the last tenant rushed into his store early one morning, "'paid his bill and departed without a word of explanation. "'But he looked, Mr. Tenowitz told me, "'as though he had seen a ghost. "'I don't think there is anything the matter with the old house,' "'their informant continued, "'except just loneliness.' Of course, big barn-like rooms, when they are empty, echo every sound in a mournful manner, without supernatural aid. But how did it all start? Bobs inquired. Did anything of an unusual nature ever happen there? Miss Selensky nodded and then continued. The story is that the only daughter of the last of the Pensingers who lived there disappeared one night and was never seen again. Her mother, so the tale goes, wished her to marry an elderly English nobleman, but she loved a poor Hungarian violinist whom she was forbidden to see. Because of her grief she did many strange things, and one of them was to walk at midnight, dressed all in white along the brink of the dark swirling river which edged the wide lawn in front of her home. 
Her white silk shawl was found on the bank one morning, and the lovely Marilyn Pensinger was never seen again. Her father, however, was convinced that his daughter was not drowned, but that she had married the man she loved and returned with him to his native land, Hungary. So great was his faith in his own theory that, in his will, he stated that the tax on the old Pinsinger mansion should be paid for one hundred years, and that it should become the property of any descendant of his daughter, Marilyn, who could be found within that time. I believe that will was made about seventy-five years ago, and so, you see, there are twenty-five years remaining for an heir to turn up. What will happen if no one claims the old place? Gloria inquired. It will be sold and the money devoted to charity, Miss Selensky told them. That certainly is an interesting yarn, Bobs declared, and then added gleefully, I suppose people around here think that the fair Marilyn returns at midnight prowling along the shores of the river looking for her white silk shawl. Miss Selensky nodded. That's about it, I believe. Then she added brightly, I'll tell you what, I'm not busy at this hour, and if you wish I'll take you over to see the old place. Mr. Tenowitz will give me the keys. Thank you, Miss Selensky, Gloria said. We would be glad to have you show us the place. There seems to be nothing else around here to rent, and we might remain in the Pensinger mansion until you have a model flat unoccupied. That will not be soon, they were told. There is a long waiting list. Then, after hanging a sign on the door which stated that she would be gone for half an hour, Miss Selensky and the three interested young people went down 78th Street and towards the East River. Bobs was hilariously excited. Perhaps, after all, she was going to have an opportunity to really practice what she had, half in fun, called her chosen profession. For was there not a mystery to be solved and an heir to be found? End of chapter 4